You're watching the Gene Gate Memorial Mayhem event from Johnny G's Fun Center in Warner Robins, Georgia. And that sound means only one thing. Charlie Cash is opening up the cash vault. We're talking about the NWA RPW Tag Team Champions. And we know he has several men in the cash vault. So we never know which two he's gonna have defending the titles. Uh, but we do know the men that won those titles, certainly Rob Adonis and hit for hire Bobby Moore. And they are what the team that truly does define the cash vault, at least recently. You're right, the judge also still part of the team. And it appears that Danny only has joined the team. But tonight, we're looking at Charlie Cash, we're looking at the titles, and Bobby Moore and Rob Adonis. Uh, Charlie Cash is big enough to wear two championship belts. Charlie, enough, Charlie Cash is big enough to take up a lot of TV space. The man for which high definition simply is not sufficient. His back could be a billboard, you know. It is. <laughs> and these He's just guys, not advertising much. These guys have had these titles for quite some time, and a lot of people don't like the way they got the title, but the fact remains they've held on to them. Very much so. You've got to give the credit where credit is due. They've been def And they've been defending the titles against all comers, and right now an example of that, a great team only recently together. You remember now with J-Rod, it wasn't that long ago, it wasn't that long ago that J-Rod was burned severely at yes. the hands of Danny only. And what's interesting about this, Charlie Cash has been known to distract wrestlers to interfere in matches. For this matchup, Frankie Valentine and J-Rod, they have a third member coming out with them. Very much so. And there they are, J-Rod and Frankie Valentine. Company to the ring. Frankie Valentine's uncle, Billy Knight. Billy Knight, they almost burnt him to a crispy critter too not that long ago. And Billy Knight is the uncle of Frankie Valentine, and he's a wrestler himself. We've seen him in action on Rampage Pro Wrestling in the past. And I'm glad that he's a ringside because for once, maybe J-Rod and Frankie Valentine won't have to worry so much about Charlie Cash. And this match is for the NWA our PW Tag Team Championship, and the title to change hands right here at Memorial Mayhem. What a main event. This will be a main event anywhere in the country. Only the second event at the Gene Gate Memorial Mayhem. Very much so, and Billy Knight at ringside, Charlie Cash, I think is gonna be neutralized in this match. It's gonna be decided by the better team tonight. And it will be uh, J-Rod starting out for his team against Hit for Hire, Bobby Moore. We've also uh, alluded to the fact that Hit for hire Bobby Moore, the longest running member of the cash vault. He's been with Charlie for a long time. Well, I don't know if that's quite fair, although certainly he does resemble this comment as Gorilla Monsoon might have sort of said, Bobby Moore being referred to as Barney. And I, and I don't think they mean Barney Fife either, do they? No, not at all, not at all. I think they're speaking of a, uh, a, a dinosaur-esque kind of child character. Kind of a, a chubby dinosaur. Yeah, well, he is a bit, a bit rotund. <laughs> Good punch that time, and a forearm blast there by J-Rod. Series of batteries, battering rams that time. Backs him into the corner. Arm clip all the way across the ring by J-Rod. Charges in J -Rod. and caught him with a clothesline. Remember how J-Rod's got a lot to get back in this one. He's been on the sidelines for quite a while now, recovering from severe burns to one side of his face near his eye. Could have caused some blindness in that eye. Dr. Johnny Gayton checked him out. It appears his vision is okay at this point, and that's good news for J-Rod. Right now, though, Frankie Valentine back in. Not the biggest athlete in Rampage Pro Wrestling, but boy, this guy will, will give a lot and will take a lot in every single match. There's no quit in Frankie Valentine. And now into that side headlock by Bobby Moore. This man's a, a paid hired hitman, and Charlie Cash has paid him well to get some things done for him. And holding on that title right now is the job he's been given. You know, fans that are looking to be uh, visiting Rampage Pro Wrestling in the month of June on the 10th and the 24th, want to let you know we're going to be seeing an awful lot of stars. I can commit right now, assuming Kyle Matthews is able to retain the title, and we'll see that in our main event next week. I know Kyle Matthews, who's been traveling all over the United States, but he plans to be here for the month of June. I know Casey McKnight is returning in the month of June. I know we're going to see the return of Cedric Alexander. And on one of the dates in June, the appearance of the NWA North American Heavyweight champion Sean Tempers the temptation will make his debut here at Rampage Pro Wrestling and I've heard a lot about that young man and certainly look forward to seeing him in a Rampage Pro Wrestling ring high knee lift that time by Frankie Valentine 
So something great to look forward to is the summer months come on. You think it's hot outside? It's going to be really hotter inside that ring. A lot of new stars because Rampage Pro Wrestling is a destination for wrestlers in professional wrestling. This is the place to go to be seen and to make a reputation. Equally, it's a place to lose a reputation, take a step back because the competition is just that severe. And I want to let the fans know as the summer months approach, you know, a lot of uh, wrestling arenas are hot in the summer. This is not one of those. Air we have AC. At well, Johnny not only G's. that, restaurant quality <laughs> food, concession food in there. You don't even need to leave the arena to get fed. But when you do, you got to stop on the outside, try some of those great wings, play the games, go ride the go-karts. There's go -karts. no need to go anywhere else. Just stay here all day. Family now, fun for the whole family. Valentine is in step up, drops an elbow on Bobby Moore. And once again, as seems to be the habit, with the cash ball team, Bobby Moore is in for the early part of the match, takes punishment after punishment. The man seems to be almost masochistic in his ability to take punishment and enjoy it. Slams that head now into the turnbuckle, Titus made, and then comes J-Rod. And you know, J-Rod had to take it personal. I know Danny Only's the man who burned him, but he knows who gave the orders to Danny Only, and that was Shirley Cash. Very much so. Oh, trust me, when it, when it has to do with the cash vault, you know that Charlie Cash is pulling all of the strings because he pays all the bills. And I would tell Danny only, if when you play fire with fire, you get burned, and if J. Rod ever gets his hands on him, it's not gonna be good. Very much so, I'll tell you, Danny Only's another another crazy guy. And now, double maneuver that time, back suplex by both men. Frankie Valentine getting out of the ring, there's the count, one, two, not enough for a three count. Stan Robinson close, but no cigar right there. Now a hook, Frankie Valentine back in, kick to the gut. Those quick tags in and out, the key to successful tag team wrestling. You may remember Gene and Ole, the Anderson brothers, very good at quick tags. Very much so. Controlling the men on their side of the ring is the other key, not giving him an opportunity to make the tag. And if it was the Anderson brothers you're talking about, they made the man suffer until he hopefully got the tag, and he wanted desperately to. But right there, the mistake. And right there, Bobby Moore brings him over to the corner. Rob Adonis moving away. Bobby Moore goes up. Takes a little bit too long. Frankie Valentine cuts him off. And there's J-Rod right as Rob Adonis tries to come in. That's going to hurt. Absolutely. And right now he is literally on the ropes. And going up there with him is Frankie Valentine going for a high-risk power move here. Russian leg Russian sweep Russian leg the sweep. My wow. Golly. Yes. Would you call that a super Russian leg sweep? Very much so. Kick out should have hooked the leg on Bobby Moore early in the match. But already the intensity high. You can tell J-Rod and Frankie Valentine are smelling tag team gold at Rampage Pro Wrestling right now. And what better place to win the titles than when all eyes are on you. The DVD is being made here. The special event, the Gene Gate Memorial Mayhem. And Charlie Cash now distracting Frankie Valentine. And watch out as he turns around, clobbered Ooh, by hit for hire. Right. Say, Frankie Valentine, J-Rod, sort of a dream team here. Both of them, tremendous credentials as champions. Both of them have that tag team experience. In fact, at one time, Frankie Valentine, of course, teamed with Kyle Matthews. J-Rod, the only Triple Crown winner, he's been a tag team champion. Now on the mat, crawling on his hands and knees. Needs to make that tag to J-Rod, being worked over here by the super heavyweight, Rob Adonis, the man they used to call Mr. Big. And now that bear hug being applied. And the bear hug is a move that certainly has won many titles in the past and won many matches in the past of wrestling. But right now, what it's serving to do is wear down Frankie Valentine, punish Frankie Valentine, keep Frankie Valentine away from his corner, away from J-Rod. But Frankie Valentine, as he always does, fighting back, manages to break the hold, goes in. Ah, if I were him, I would have made the tag there, and that's what happens when you don't. Pub handle slam that time, and you know Frankie giving up so much size to Rob Adonis and Bobby Moore, but especially this man, Rob Adonis. When you talk about a heavyweight champion, that is Rob Adonis. Rob Adonis cover, I'm amazed Frankie Valentine was able to kick out with the big man, had him covered like that, but the crowd solidly behind Frankie Valentine, trying to give him that second win, the support that generates it. Off the ropes now, late oh. trip takedown. J-Rod tried to make the tag as he came into the ropes, very close, the timing just a little bit off. J-Rod, I know, is right now kicking himself a little bit because he could have gotten himself into the match if he had just been ready for that. Working over this young man severely. And they know what's at stake here. They have their titles on the line here. And Charlie Cash has not forgotten, I'm sure, that Billy Knight is at ringside if he tries to make any moves in the ring. 
Now Bobby Moore picking Frankie Valentin up and Val That's not really a good idea. Get Frankie Valentin up. He thinks he's ready to get free. And again, he goes away to try to break free, but ends up getting caught right there. Backbreaker now. J-Rod knocked off the corner. Bobby Moore goes for a cover. J-Rod, though, pulls him off, getting into the ring. Does a little damage himself as Stan Robinson tells J-Rod he better get out of the ring at this point, and it just causes more damage to Frankie Valentine. Bobby Moore laying solid kicks into him as he's down. And for the fans who are new here at Rampage Pro Wrestling, uh, Frankie Valentine, sort of a second-generation wrestler coming from uh, his stepfather's pretty good Doug Summers. So he has a wrestling family. Wrestling is in his family and in his blood, and you can see it in his instincts out there. He lives and breathes wrestling. It comes naturally to Frankie Valentine. And now Bobby Moore changing the Goes for the cover right there. I'm not sure what Bobby was trying to accomplish, but he didn't get a pin for sure. You know, those purple wristbands probably don't help the Barney chance any do they? No, and when he wears the purple <laughs> outfit, that really doesn't help. Shoots him off the ropes. Drops and a again, hold right there. It. Now the big man is in. Picks up his own man and stabs oh. him on the back of Frankie Valentine using Bobby Moore That's as a, a weapon. Another thing the Anderson brothers used to do is sacrifice each other. Very much so. Gene Anderson in particular would in, would go in, would take great links to impose pain on himself over in the corner to hurt the other man and only took great advantage of and that. And it was successful. And these guys are the champions because they don't care what they have to do. They don't mind getting hurt. Off the ropes. Oh, this is close by. Well, Frankie Valentine is giving up, well, he weighs probably just a little over half of what Rob Adonis weighs. Definitely five, six, seven inches shorter. Tremendous weight and size disadvantage for Frankie Valentine, but I don't think he really believes in that. I don't think Frankie Valentine believes that anybody's bigger than him. Not the size of the man in the fight, size of the fight in the man. But right now, this is gonna hurt any man Man, the size of Bobby Moore comes down with his full body weight on your back when you're elevated like that. No way to protect yourself, Ben. And right now, he has the man down. Referee is distracted by J-Rod, who has had enough. Tired of watching the shenanigans. Well, in that one case, J-Rod's distraction helped Frankie Valentine. He might have been pinned right there. And you hear the fans chanting Frankie. Surely Frankie, one of the fan favorites here, a former uh, NWA RPW TV champion himself and former tag team champion in the past. This man is not a stranger to championship titles. And neither is J-Rod, who is the triple crown winner, the only man who's held all the titles here. Very much so. And certainly he would like to get another title around his waist. And this is his opportunity. On with reversal by Frankie. Frankie walks right into that forearm and clobbers him right down to the canvas. And this and could now, be it right here. Taking his time, though, is Bobby Moore, and that's a mistake you can't give Frankie. Well, right there, J-Rod thought it was over, and now J-Rod trying to pull Frankie Valentine back. Isn't able to do it, but Valentine now getting a little bit of his sense back, trying to move in that direction. Unsuccessful cutoff by Bobby Moore, and now Moore throws him out of the ring and right over where Charlie Cash is. That's not a good place to be, Ben. And he crashes hard down to the floor, and there's not any give on that floor. Billy There's, Knight on the opposite side of the ring. I wouldn't even call that padding. It's very little padding. Now Billy Knight notices what's going on to Frankie Valentine. Looks like he was going to head over there, but he hasn't at this point as referee Stan Robinson distracted by Bobby Moore. And Rob Adonis has Frankie Valentine. But great, J-Rod's come in now. Picks up Bobby Moore but, oh. and takes him down hard. Now J-Rod's outside the ring and Moore is down, but on the outside, powerbomb was being attempted by Rob Adonis. But look at Frankie floor. Valentine fights out, kicks Rob Adonis down. Thank you, Valentine is back up on his feet as Bobby Moore comes in, catches one to the midsection. Into the, the ring, rolls the fight through we Frankie Valentine, about. and there's the tag. Determination pays off. Tag is made. J-Rod comes in, swing and miss. And a close line by J-Rod. Back and elbow. Back elbow. First there kick, go the fancy second footwork. kick, both of the legs softens him up. Punch to the chest. There's a knee from Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore comes off, caught deep in the midsection by J-Rod, who comes in, catches him with the knee. Neck breaker. And that could be it. New champions right here. Two. Just two. Wow. Not enough. So close, J-Rod had had that rest, and he is set and ready now. J-Rod now just pulled down that knee pad. And you know what that means. He loves to use those feet and Swing those Swing and a miss right there, though. Bobby is able to catch him. Takes him in hard right into the corner turnbuckle. Does Bobby Moore. 
Thought J-Rod had, but wait, there's Frankie Valentine. Catches him with those double knees, and J-Rod is up. Comes off with that knee. That could be it right there. There's one, one. there's two. two. Adonis Go. breaks the move there, breaks the count. And that's why they are champions. And look at him, he's dragging J-Rod out of the ring. Swing and a miss right there, but J-Rod doesn't. One blow after another. Referee Stan Robinson has sort of lost a little bit of control on this as Valentine goes up. What not is sure, Frankie gonna do? Not sure who the legal men are at this point as Valentine is up top. Bobby Moore is down. J-Rod trying to get his bearing. Oh! Moonsaults off the top. And I thought he was aiming for Bobby Moore. He was aiming for Rob Adonis. And Bobby Moore is laid out Cole in the ring. J-Rod signals RPW, rolls into the ring. He's the legal man, goes for the cover. Bobby Moore's been down for an eternity, though. Oh, not quick enough to cover him. That gave him enough time to kick out of that move if he had only gotten in there earlier, Ben. That could have been it. Bobby Moore was just laying there lifeless. A knee that time and another knee. And it's J-Rod now thrown off by Bobby Moore and ducks him head first into the turnbuckle, caught him with that running clothesline, and he is incensed in the ring. Bobby Moore though, taking his time getting up now. J-Rod not rushing here, watching him as he gets up. J-Rod sees a real opportunity here as Bobby Moore is going into the wrong corner at this point. Valentine though, still down on the outside, isn't gonna be a factor. There's Adonis, catches him up, spine buster. And caught him hard that time, takes a lot of the life right out of the man. And that's a big man to be throwing someone down that hard. J-Rod now all alone, Valentine still down and out on the outside after that moonsault, but Valentine finally starting to get up to his feet. There's Bobby Moore, catches it. That's Bridge, the, not the legal man, not allowing the cover. There's Bobby Moore, a break up now. by Valentine right there. All four men now in the ring at the same time as Frankie Valentine came in to break it up. And we've got all kind of action going on here, this NWA RPW tag Step team up, drop match. kick, knocks Adonis. This is breaking down all over the place, but highly competitive on both sides as now it's Frankie Valentine and J-Rod back with a small advantage, more into the corner. J-Rod not quite sure where he is, manages to find his bearings, goes over, attacks Rob Adonis in the opposite corner, and now. Looks like a Texas Tornado match right now. I'll tell you, right now, both men solidly going after their men in the corner as referee Stan Robinson. Wait a minute. Frankie Valentine just got dumped to the outside. Almost hit Charlie, his hat Charlie Cash off. lost his hat. J-Rod all alone in the ring at this Double point. Double thrust on Rob Wait Adonis. Billy Knight is chasing Charlie Cash, but what is he the, doing? he's put another he's pad on. He's got an on. elbow pad, he's sliding looks, on. There's something attached to that pad. Wow! Clobbing him with a pad. There's a cover. The, the referee, one, two, three. He hit him with something, and now taking it right back off and stuffing it down his trunk opportunistic. Rob Adonis was right there at the right time when he got caught. He was in the elbow pad. He had something taped in there. Your winners and still NWA RPW Tag Team Champions. Rob Adonis and Bobby Moore. The cash ball was successful. I don't like the way they did it, but they did it. Well, that wasn't the normal elbow. Bobby Moore's elbows are devastating, but they don't do that, Ben. No. They don't knock the man out, and that's what's happened right there. Again, we see the dirty tricks paying off. Charlie Cash and the cash ball. You're watching the Gene Gate Memorial Mayhem, and more action coming up. Highlights, Davey Richards, Casey McKnight coming up next.